Hey there, Dengas Stu here. Um, tonight we're just going to go through putting the power trim and tilt uh, mechanism back onto the bracket of this outboard. Um, I was just having a look through the old video I did when I um, took it off and uh, it's sort of funny watching back, it's one of the earlier videos I did and it's, uh, it's kind of pretty dodgy. So I'm going to try and edit this one a bit better for you and make it get to the point a bit quicker. Um, I've already got the um, the sort of the lower cowling and the, the leg back on the, the swivel bracket, so that bit was done. I actually didn't do a video on that one because I was running short of time, but it's it's done now. So we're going to sort of jump straight into just putting this assembly back together and whacking it on. So we'll just go over to the bench first, and I'll show you the assembly and some of the new parts I bought for it. All right, here we go. Um, so it's raining tonight. I hope that doesn't help, doesn't sort of hinder the audio too much. I know I've. Uh, Got to sort my audio out, it's not that clear. Um, so, trust me, I'll work on that. Um, so, what we've got is the main, um, the main motor and hydraulic assembly. Uh, this is actually in pretty good nick. I, um, I was sort of told that this was, um, was put on quite recently uh, before I got the boat, so I don't think this is too old, which is nice. Um, this was the bottom pin that went through this um, uh, sort of anode assembly, uh, and this was the top pin that was from here. So the main things that had failed, uh, so these also had these nylon bushings. These ones I'm renewing because they're, you know, they're serviceable, they're not great. Uh, the slimmer one is for the bottom bolt, which is a larger diameter, and the one with the thicker walls is for the smaller one. They're quite obvious when you see them, how they fit. The other things I've purchased are these, uh, I think of them as sort of a T-piece shape, the, this sort of flange shape. Um, bought new ones for these, um, and these are for the bottom. Um, these are the part number, uh, let me show you, you can see that. Um, these ones and these are the top ones. So I've got uh, uh, sort of slightly hard to see part number on it. Um, so got me so these are actually completely broken on the other one. The other thing I've bought is a just a circlet that goes on the top pin. I actually misspoke in the original video where I said there was a circlet on both sides. There's not, there's only a circlet on one side and the other side's just got a straight flange. So it pushes in and then the circlet holds it. Uh, from memory this was pushed starboard to port through on my motor but I'm, I'd be surprised if it actually mattered which way you went through. So the nylon bushings for this bottom side go in here as two halves this way. This is the old one so I'm going to try and pry this one out and then I'm probably going to have to punch the other one through. Uh, I'll have a look how easy these come out. I think they're just going to break. Um, I think this is going to be a slightly tedious process, so I won't bore you with this one. So what I'm doing is just getting all the remnants here of the old, oops, of the old bushes out of here, the nylon bushings. So get those out. When that's all cleaned up, we'll show you putting the new ones in. So just be aware that if you do have any sort of old nylon in here, you really need to replace these, and they're not a part of it. They're just something to bring out and clean it back to metal. So I'll be back with you soon. Alright, so here's what we're going to try and do. Um, I think I said I wasn't going to bore you with it, but we'll sort of go through a few different techniques, because I think this is sort of the fun of these types of videos. Um, and I don't just mean this in the sense of you watching me do this. It's the point, you know, the videos I watch that other people do. I love watching videos that other people make. I don't see this as a one-way sort of, you know, spread information. I love sort of just doing some videos and watching other people's because we just learn different techniques from each other. Um, what I'm going to do to try to get this out is actually I'm just going to try and put a hacksaw through it and see if I can actually cut down into, down through the bushing and see if it helps me sort of compress it and get it out. Um, which sort of brings me to another point. Um, I guess just when I watch a lot of videos and people use various techniques and they get a lot of uh, criticism for sort of being hack mechanics or whatever. But I think whenever you apply a technique You've just got to look at the risks, um, what are the chances of going wrong, and what are the consequences of going wrong. In this case, I think, you know, you're going to cut through it, maybe you cut a little bit of aluminium. It's not going to rust, it's not like you're cutting through a coating on it, it's going to mean it's going to rust to pieces. And 
the, the sort of articulating uh, component of it, the bit that actually rubs, is the inside where any cut in the aluminium is going to be on the outside. So in this case I just figure you've got nothing to lose. Maybe you could find a perfect uh, diameter socket for there, try and punch it through, a machine shop might put it in a hydraulic press, push it out. Look, there's a million one ways, but the reality is I think you make do with what you got. So you can get um, just little handles for hacksaws if you're trying to cut into something. I'm actually just going to put the blade through and then put it back on the hacksaw. It's going to be the easiest way to do it. And you're going to hear... Uh, pretty quick to hear it and uh, feel it once it's cut through. I'm actually going to cut through both sides. You know, I'd love to see people post a few links to them doing similar things because to me this is all just about sharing ideas. I um, I imagine a bit of heat kind of help here. I mean, it is just nylon, so softening it probably wouldn't hurt. It is very brittle at the moment, I noticed just from its age. So I don't know whether a bit of heat has got to... Uh... Oh, there we go. It's going to soften it up a little bit, but looks like this is working so far. I think really what those cuts did Actually, oh yeah, some of them were all the way through, but I think really what it did was just allow it to compress, just gave it the space to compress slightly. And then this one's... Okay, so, so just the four pieces, but that's all I was looking to achieve. Um, not seeing any huge damage in there, and I'm not worried if there is, because as I said, once you put the new bushing in, it's just completely inconsequential. What I will do is just clean that up and um, put a bit of grease in here before I put the new ones in because, um, you know, if ever I do have to take this apart, I don't want to have to go through this again. Not that it was particularly difficult, but um, I think any time you can use a bit of grease, a bit of anti-seize or whatever to make life easier for yourself down the track, it's a win. So this is just a little bit of a brass brush on the inside. Just clean up some of that corrosion. All right, so we'll clean this up. Um, now we've got these two bottom, uh, that's the top one, sorry. So we've got this one, which is the other bottom one. And I've already opened one, which is here. So I'm just gonna get a little bit of uh, grease for these. Uh, what have we got? Uh, actually, this got this tube that was, this is just some Penrite marine grease from the grease gun, it sort of doesn't work too well when it gets to the end of the um, tube, so I just, just use it as a bit of ad, ad hoc grease after that. Okay, so, now One in that side. All right. One in this side. All right. So, new bushings installed at the bottom. Now, um, this main pin, let's just sort of roughly assemble this on the bench before we head over. Okay, sorry, keep getting distracted. I promised myself I uh, wouldn't make this one as crap as the uh, removal video, but I uh, keep wandering off. Um, maybe it's the uh, Bailey's Martinis. If you want to know what's in the Bailey's Martini, it's Bailey's and a martini glass. They're not quite easy to make. Um, I don't even like Bailey's, anyway. Um, so, we got this. Uh, bushing that goes in the centre here, and then at this end, we've got those two inserted that we did. Now what I'm going to do, 
um, we've got the rod here which has a uh, washer and a bolt. Uh, one end of this I'll take you over and I'll show you on the uh, on the housing there but uh, one end of the bracket actually is recessed to take this hex head so you have to push it in from that side that locks in in the other ends your washer and your nut. So let's go a quick look at that and um, I'll show you what I'm talking about. So on this uh, starboard side of the bracket we've got this hex head and then the other side see over here is just flush so what I'm going to do is I'm going to feed the entire mechanism through this side um, so put the bolt through feed it through the anode bracket feed it through the base of the um, the trim tilt mechanism till it's right through and then we can fasten the nut on this side so I'll just pop the camera on the bench and uh, we'll do that so on the end of this uh, um, pin is just one little circlip that replaces the one that was completely corroded so I've just got that ready to go so the final thing I'm going to do is just put a bit of grease on the inside and outside this bushing goes through the centre push the pin through, lets it hang, and then I'm just going to get this uh, circuit. Now what I'm going to do, um, I'm kind of wishing I'd put this on the new dab because I could lower it more elegantly, but what I need to do now is just lower this into position and then put the bolt through from this side because this is the side where the hex head gets recessed. Uh, what I may do, just while I'm here, is feed these, uh, this is the power leads for it. Um, oh, that's just the boot that covers the power loop. Now on the um, on the disassembler video, you may have noticed we um, took a sensor off. So there is a trim tilt sensor. It's basically a sort of variable resistor of some description, I think. That um, feeds a position of the trim tilt to the indicator on the taco. Um, I'm not going to worry about that. You know, it's a small boat, you can see the trim just by looking backwards, I don't really need that sort of uh, feed. And the one that was on this new bracket was broken, it's just not worth the money to replace it. So all I've got to feed back this time is just the power for it. Now, uh, what I do need to do though, is have a look at how I'm going to get this position so I can get this bolt in past the uh, bracket. Um, I had that problem with the pin in the first video and I ended up actually laying this on its side. So what I might do is actually lay this down the bench again. I might clear a bench space and we'll, we'll push on laying it flat. So, uh, looking from the backside now, so from within the boat looking out, um, we're going to uh, just slot this bracket back in place. Now, if we have a look here, it's just a little bit too far, so all I really need to do is just, uh, with extra hands, just bring this bracket down a bit until these uh, holes are lined up. So all I was doing then is sighting down through here and lowering the tilt of the motor until it matches the position of the hydraulic system. Once we got that. So I'm actually curious to know what other people prefer with regards to 
these types of processes because the service manual always says take the pin and gently slide it into you know the bracket and you're like yeah okay it's very easy to say and so for people looking for the steps I think service manuals are great um, to me one of the things I really like about watching other people's videos is seeing the reality of it you know how hard is it to get that CV joint out or a prop shaft off or a bearing housing out that's the kind of the story that service manuals don't tell you it's certainly what I like to watch and it's I guess the way I like to then do these videos is sort of maybe make them a bit longer than they could be rather than a five minute reproduction of the uh, service manual will end up sort of showing how fiddly some bits can be and I'm curious to hear what uh, what other people want so feel free to comment on that make the hardest part is actually getting it through here because this is the tightest fit. So it's a 24mm socket on here. What I'm actually going to do is just run this through once. So the threads are kind of biting it. I'm curious to see how far it comes through the other side. need to seat it a little bit first. It's kind of not feeling, I mean it's obviously a, a really, really uh, similar diameter, which in some ways I think is a good sign, but another part of me thinks this can't possibly be right. So, so that thread's actually bitten into the nylon and wound itself through. Yeah, and now we can kind of push it. So what seems to have worked finally <laughs> was uh, aligning it, just hitting it till it's seated and then winding it. So getting your alignment as close as you can, giving it a hit and then for me actually using the thread to bite into those nylon bushings. side now. Let's have a look. Alright, so once that's aligned, I'm just gonna align this head with the socket there. end up with is the bolt through the other side. So that felt trickier than it should have been to be honest. Um, the main culprit seems to have been how tight the fit is on these new nylon bushings. The Yamaha parts that I believe to be correct. Don't know. Anyway. So once again, as I was saying, you know, I kind of like bids because 
the manual tells you do this, the reality is never quite that simple. So, uh, washer and nut, I might clean these up a little bit now. They've copped a fair bit of dirt from that process. And then after that, we're pretty much done. Uh, the wires here go to the um, go to the trim tilt relay, which is uh, right at the front of the motor low down. We'll have a look at that when I put the power head back on. But for now, that's the process for installing the mechanism. Uh, as I said, it seemed a little bit harder than it should. So if you Got any clues as to maybe what could have been done differently or what the problem was? Love to hear from you. This we can now just crank up because this ends embedded in that recess. So there's no dramas there. start putting our anode wires back in place. Uh, so we've essentially got two. One through to the uh, anode on the motor itself, which is a 10 mil. This ratchet. Um, and once it's on the leg and sitting upright, I'm just going to check the uh, oil level in it as well, or the hydraulic fluid. Um, I think just a standard um, Automatic transmission fluid is what they recommend. So that's pretty straightforward, but it does have to be done in the correct orientation, so we can't do that right here. So thanks for watching, um, this is a reasonably straightforward process conceptually. I think it's just the size of the bolts and everything that means a bit of force and a bit of jiggling is required, but there's no real complexity to the task. It's just going to sort of potentially test a bit of your uh, patience and techniques with um, just getting it back together. So that's it in, needs wiring up for sure. So let's um, pop it on the back on the stand and then I'll just uh, hook these leads up to the battery manually without the relay and we'll just give it a bit of a test. So, morning. I, um, I was just editing this up and I thought, oh no, I'll, I should add a section on um, just topping up the reservoir here. It may actually be full. It's working fine, but I'll, I'll redo the, the demo of it just uh, given that we're here again um, in better light. So it's a 17mm nut on here, um, don't know how, oh good, wasn't too hard to crack which is good, um, and uh, this needs to just be topped up until it's uh, that it's running out tells me it's already, already completely full. It needs to be topped up to the bottom of this hole. So this clearly is, is pretty full as it is. So I don't think I'm going to be able to uh, put any more in. Uh, if it had been low, I um, simply would have put in some of this uh, automatic transmission fluid uh, using something along that line just to sort of get it into the hole and squeeze it in. Uh, that seems completely topped up to me so I'm not going to worry about that but if you did have to do it that's the way it'd be so let's um, just uh, run through the test again I'll show you how this thing's working so these are just a set of uh, standard sort of battery leads um, ones that came with the motor I just hooked up to a normal car battery um, can't recall exactly which way around it is but um, 
essentially you've got a blue and green coming from the motor and these will go to the relay which I'll go through when I reinstall the power head. Um, the, um, uh, so if I just, so basically one polarity will be up, the other polarity is down. So in this case I'll just start with uh, the green wire that's positive. Oh, and that's down. And then blue wire is positive. We'll back up. So that's it. Um, it's all sort of installed. It was a little bit trickier than I'd hoped, but uh, we got there in the end. Um, but like all these things, you know, it's it sort of seems pretty straightforward in the manual, and then you try and do it, and there's always gotchas. And I'd rather sort of show it to you, warts and all, than start doing it, have this cut, and then presto, it's all together, and you're wondering how it got there uh, and why it's hard for you, because it's just hard for everyone. Don't ever, don't ever think it's just you. <laughs> Uh, so thanks for watching, I hope you got something out of this video, um, feel free to comment if you've got any suggestions of how I could have done things differently or any problems you might be having. Um, and if you enjoy this video and you want to see the rest of this assembly project then uh, please subscribe. Alright, catch you soon, see ya.